Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's episode, we're going to take a look at the astrology for the month of May. That's the sidereal Vedic astrology. So if you don't know your sidereal Vedic moon sign or your sidereal Vedic ascendant, then I've got a link in the description below. You'll be able to go there, plug in your details, get your chart and find out your moon sign and your ascendant sign. And what you can do with my reports is you can click on, you know, if it's Aries ascendant and Leo moon or, or whatever it is, you can just click on the bits that you want to watch. You can also watch your sun sign. Uh, if you want to check in on your relationship, you can click on Venus. You know, you could, you could click on Venus if you're a man, you can click on Jupiter if you're a lady. Some people are doing that, so that's fine. You can do that kind of thing as well. Depends on how well you know your chart, depends on how well you know your planets. What I recommend is mainly look at your moon sign and your ascendant sign. Okay, look at both of those. Your moon sign will tell you mentally and emotionally how you're going to feel about the movement of the planets and your ascendant will show you the physical path of your life, what's actually going to happen. Okay, so definitely tune into both. Now I want to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining this channel. If you have a look on the homepage of the channel, you'll see so many different things. There are meditations, there are master's episodes, case studies, all kinds of different things. So do explore the channel and see what's out there. Lately, I haven't had too much time to be putting up content because I've been so busy doing readings. Uh, in fact, I've been so busy doing readings that this month I don't have much of a news matchup. Those of you who've been with me for a while, you know that when I do a monthly like this, I like to match up what's been happening in the news with what's been happening up there in the sky. And this month, I tell you, we don't have that much to match up. Uh, nothing really caught my attention or grabbed me and the other thing is I've just been so busy doing readings just non-stop every time I finish one bang there's another one you know and I've been that busy so thank you thank you so much to everybody who's been booking me it's just fantastic I noticed for me when Jupiter went into Aquarius uh, that's when all the bookings just started flooding in so there we go that that's been great for me so thank you uh, and I'm gonna link up here or wherever I can to that Jupiter uh, movement so that if you miss that you'll be able to watch that you'll be able to see all right well what's Jupiter doing for me in my chart so in terms of news there are just a couple of tiny things I can cover I'm just looking at my notes now and I've got a note here that yes there has been a lot of suffering in India and I just wanted to say that my heart goes out to anybody who's suffering in India right now and anyone who is overseas worried about family in India. I'm worried about family in India too. And uh, you know, this, this definitely is a, a tough time out there. I would say astrologically, it could, I mean, it is Saturn in Capricorn just intensifying. And I don't see it as, as being too much more than that. I think we are gonna have another couple of tough years with Saturn in Capricorn. Uh, and you know keep up with these reports and I'll keep updating you about Saturn's movement we've got a retrograde that I'll talk about in this report today so we're going to see how that's going to affect each and every one of us but there's definitely quite a bit of suffering happening in India the other item of news that I thought I would just point you to this is not news actually this is just a film it's a beautiful film that someone has made about Vandana Shiva and I only just found it myself a couple of hours ago before making just before setting up my camera now I uh, just happened to be on Facebook I'm not a big Facebook person I want to get off there actually but um, there are a couple of friends who like to email me through that so I do use it I occasionally log on I'm very glad I did today because I saw on Michaela Sheldon's page and I'll put her name up so if you wanted to do some research about her she's an amazing energy intuitive channeler guide she does all kinds of incredible things and i watch her videos and she pointed everybody to this film about vandana shiva so i'm going to link that below i've watched 20 minutes i haven't finished it all but i know that this is something i need to share with people and i'm sharing it with you so do check out 
uh, this amazing film. It's beautifully shot, it's beautifully put together. So I'm definitely gonna watch the entire thing. Okay, so let's take a look at the stars in brief for the month of May. What do we have happening in our skies? Well, at a high level, just a high level overview perspective, we've got a lot of earth energy this month and we've got a lot of air energy this month. So how can we take advantage of that personally, individually? Uh, I do believe this is a great month to take your ideas, your creative ideas, and to manifest them on the earth plane. So we're dealing with air, we're dealing with thought energy, we're dealing with what's happening in the sky. How can we make that manifest uh, here on the earth plane? I've got a note here, we've got Mars and Gemini. Can we be hands-on about what, what it is that we're creating? That can be a really good way to channel that Mars energy. So I do believe that we can all achieve quite a lot this month creatively. It's, it's going to be good, uh, especially, you know, yeah, if you're creative or you want to make something happen in the world. So individually, I think the energy is going to be fantastic this month. Okay, so that, that's very much how I've looked at it. Uh, for all of us. So I've got a note here at a high level we have two retrogrades so we've got Mercury in retrograde at the very end of the month also Saturn at the end of the month we will be going retrograde so May is really a jam-packed month there's a lot going on we've also got a lunar eclipse as well so why don't we get into some specifics so we've got the first of May the Sun is conjunct Uranus so I've got I note here that this can trigger governments possibly uh, to make some kind of 180 degree change in what they're doing. This could be linked in with communication. Uh, and I think I'm saying that because, am I saying that because of Mars? Let me just bring up the chart now. I want to bring this up and see. <coughs> Let me have a look. First of May. Yes. Yes, that is to do with Mars and communication. So either it's something to do with the ruling of the various kingdoms around the world, right? The governments, there could be some 180 degree change uh, to do with governments. And it could be something to do with communication as well, or, or how things are communicated might change. So it could be some sudden activity like that. On the 2nd of May, we've got Mercury moving out of Aries and out of combustion into Taurus. And this is nice. This, this is a good movement here. Rahu is already in there in Taurus. So we know Rahu in Taurus is definitely impacting culture at the moment, changing culture. Um, this, this rather long-term transit is, is impacting us in all kinds of ways. So cultural transformations and issues with speech, how we speak, that is being tested and I do think Rahu is, is you know is skewing things it's very difficult to speak on YouTube these days um, it's very difficult to speak in many places so Rahu is definitely there I don't want to say causing problems but he kind of is <laughs> um, all of this activity with Rahu is in square to Neptune in Aquarius. So I have had a little look at that. I know that there are some of you out there who are definitely keen on looking at Neptune in Aquarius. And I agree, this is really important because we've got Jupiter there too. Neptune is here. It is kind of causing confusion to do with the collective. Things are confusing at this time. Uh, and I do think Neptune is having its impact in our world massively. So as we continue on here, we've got 5th of May, Venus joins Mercury in Taurus. This is nice. This is very nice. Venus in Taurus. I've got a note here. This is wonderful. This is really, really good energy. I love it when Venus is in Taurus. Venus is at home. Okay, she's in her own sign. And Mercury is there too. So this is the artist combination. When you see these two together, you know you're dealing with an artist. And these artistic 
stars are in the sky and that's why I'm saying this is a great month for being creative. If you've got something creative to express, if you have something beautiful to say to someone else, you know, uh, or something that you want to share, this is a great time. So I've got the note here, perfect time for artists or creativity to flourish. Could also be a really good time to go shopping as well. Um, Venus in Taurus and Rahu's there. So, you know, watch out, okay? There could be some serious expenditure of money. So take care if that could be you and you need to take care of that. Uh, 15th of May, we've got the sun joining the party. So the sun joins the gang there in Taurus. And that's really what I'm going to focus on in the mini readings this time. So we're going to have four planets in there. It's pretty exciting. A lot of planetary energy concentrated there this month. Now, the sun is not the happiest in Taurus, especially at the beginning. As, you know, as I was clicking through and I was observing and I'm like, yeah, he's not the happiest here. But as you keep clicking through and he's approaching Gemini, uh, the sun definitely gets a lot happier as he moves through. So, and especially when that house empties itself a bit, everything becomes a lot better. So uh, that is quite interesting to observe there. Now the whole month, when we're looking at Mars, we've got Mars in Gemini. So it's a great time to get hands on, you know, um, great time to do gardening. And I know in the Northern Hemisphere, it's springtime. So perfect time for gardening. Uh, even down here in the, you know, in the, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's a good time for gardening as well. We still get very warm, lovely, long days with sun. Well, they're not long now. They kind of are closing off a bit early, but we are getting good sun. So, um, so the whole month we've got Mars in Gemini. I've got a note here that Mars isn't so happy being in Gemini because that's ruled by uh, the annoying prince. <laughs> it's the prince Mercury is annoying to Mars. So um, I do understand that. But what I've got to say about this is that you can channel that frustration into physical tasks. Really great time to get things done, get hands on, you know, put your back into it. Do something that needs your, your physical energy. So the whole month we've got Jupiter in Aquarius uh, as well. So I did a video about this as I mentioned earlier in the introduction. So I'll link that above so that you can see yourself, uh, you know, how this will impact your sign. Hi everyone, sorry about that. The camera battery was flashing red and I had to change the battery just as I was about to start talking about Mercury going retrograde. How perfect is that? As soon as I talk about Mercury going retrograde, my equipment fails. So isn't that perfect? Um, when is it going retrograde? Now this is going to happen on the 30th of May through to the 23rd of June. So this is happening a little bit over Gemini, but mostly back across Taurus. So this is really interesting. Uh, I've got the note here, be careful if you're buying anything expensive. Just don't be in a rush, go with the flow. I do have a story to tell about this and I'm sure she won't mind if I say, my mum did buy a new car during a Mercury retrograde and we've never had a problem with it. So I don't want people to be superstitious or anything and think, oh no, I shouldn't buy something expensive. You can. It's interesting, my mum really keeps on top of the retrogrades and when all of that type of thing happens. And she wanted to know before getting the car, is this a good time? But then because she was so busy and the deal came and she did it, she, she ended up going ahead. So if you're meant to have something, you'll be distracted. Even if you're into astrology and you follow these things and you know, it goes to show that if you're meant to do something, you'll do it regardless. It doesn't matter sometimes what's going on in the sky. But, you know, uh, it, it can be good to heed some of these things. I, I do in a light touch way. I don't let this stuff rule my life, but I'm always very interested. And these days, I tell you one thing I am doing. Uh, I am, you know, because I'm here in Sydney and mum and I, we have a garden and we're able to do this. We will do a small little fire on the new moon and we're just kind of, you know, write down things and, and burn up the old things and it's just a nice little thing to do. So we are doing that, uh, which is which is really cool. But, you know, I, I certainly don't want people to, um, 
get too superstitious but I, I will say be careful if you're buying something expensive just you know check check the contract or, or double check things or that kind of thing and I, I like that interpretation of Mercury retrograde which is where people say check the contracts twice and you know don't stop your life keep doing life don't let this information put you off but just um, you know be a bit more careful kind of thing the other thing that we could say about this Mercury retrograde is because it's happening over Taurus this could also be to do with love life as well this could also be to do covering old ground or maybe there's something you have to communicate to somebody so that could be something there but yeah uh, that's 30th May through to 23rd June now we've got that retrograde we've also got Saturn retrograde happening at around the similar time so that's 24th of May and that's a nice long one as we know uh, 24th May through to 12 October so that's quite long as we know what I've observed over the years of looking at Saturn retrograde for me is that I do tend to get busier I get more energy to do my work and I get busier as well so see what that happens how that manifests for you there's another small business owner I know and he also told me that he gets a lot more clients during Saturn retrograde so isn't that incredible um, that can be a really busy time for him so you will be able to, to have a look at those things if you study your chart now in a general sense this is happening in the middle of Capricorn what I'm saying to everyone uh, in the mini readings we're going to have a look at where this is happening for you which house is this happening for you and one of the things I'm going to be talking about is getting you to think about what was happening Jan Feb of this year through to about um, through to about April have a look at that period of time that is going to be whatever you were covering or dealing with there or being tested on perhaps there in the area of the life that I'm going to indicate to you in your mini reading that is going to be Saturn's going to cover that all ground again and he's just going to double check and make sure you're very strong okay so he might be pressing some weak links or just refining things or getting you to refine things uh, over that time the other thing is around the 24th of May and the 12th of October there will be two three days where Saturn stations so that's another thing that you want to take a look at there and the old myth is that you know when the karmic accountant is stationing that's when you can do something a bit naughty commit a crime rob a bank <laughs> no don't do any of those things you can what can you do I was thinking about this today I was thinking you could um, I don't know you could eat naughty food maybe and, and not and not pay for it or I don't know or just not exercise on those days or that's these are the giant crimes in my life so yeah maybe something like that uh, okay let's have a look at my notes I've got the note here could we see some justice coming during this time when Saturn is in retrograde leadership is going to be tested and leadership is going to be tested again again as I said from you know Jan Feb through to about April whatever they've been doing or dealing with at that time Saturn's going to be refining he's going to be testing he's going to be checking again uh, yeah I've got the note here those people who are being misleading those people who are committing crimes will they be taken to task I thought about this quite a bit today and I think it's unlikely um, and this is because Saturn is still in Capricorn so I really do think that this window of time where Saturn is in Capricorn is really the window where leaders yes are going to get a bit of free reign but people who don't have the best intentions uh, I think they're also going to get a bit of a free run as well I think justice is going to start coming in when Saturn gets into Aquarius this is something I will look at in more detail but that's how I'm seeing it for now I, I kind of don't don't see much justice coming for a little while yet and I think it's really going to be when Saturn moves into Aquarius 2023 start of 2023 for that 2.5 years then the spotlight will be on humanity will be on we the people and it's going to be up to us to create the justice that we want to see in the world so I'm not particularly I don't have too too many high hopes 
for big justice in the next year uh, or even in the next two years, really. I suppose kind of year and a half maybe because some of this year is spent now. But yeah. All right, let's take a look at the moon situation. What's going on with these moons? So we've got a new moon, 12th of May. That's um, 2021, yep, yeah, new moon in Aries, Kritika Nakshatra. Yes, this should be a nice moon. I'm liking this new moon. I've got the note here. I was looking at the astrology for this, uh, this new moon and I was seeing that, you know, this could be a great time for a radical haircut <laughs> because Kritika Nakshatra is, you know, the, the cutting Nakshatra, right? And we've got Aries, and so this is about you. This is about your whole sense of self. But it's like not just any haircut. This is like going from my length to chopping it all off kind of thing. Like totally just, it's like that kind of haircut. So if you are keen to do some kind of massive transformation with your look, uh, and if that involves getting a haircut, for example, or changing your wardrobe or doing something drastic, then this 12th of May new moon could be the new moon for you. Yeah, and I say that it's something drastic or radical. This is because Uranus is in the house at the same time. So a 180 degree complete transformation change overhaul. If you want to do that, I think this is the time window. I used to really like watching, uh, and she's known now as Bracca. Goldsmith, but when she was Barbara Goldsmith, she would always give the time when to have a haircut. This was years ago. She would always give uh, ha good haircut windows, time windows, and that was always a lot of fun. All right, now what else is happening moon wise? We've got full moon lunar eclipse. Wow, okay, big time. This is the 26th of May in Scorpio Anuradha Nakshatra. Okay, this is big. I've got the note here, time for something hidden to complete. Something's going to complete. Something is going to come to close. Something could be, as I like to say, eclipsed out of your life. This is not a solar eclipse. We're going to have a solar eclipse after. And a solar eclipse is quite different because that's the one that if you've gone, if you're lagging behind on your path, it can jump you forward to where you should be. Okay. But this lunar eclipse is going to, something, something's going to come to a massive major completion. It could be quite big. So I've got the note here, this time represents a major ending. Now because it's in Scorpio, so just in a general sense, this could be to do with love, in-laws, money, any of those kind of things, shared assets, that kind of thing. Could be a deeply spiritual time as well. Could be a time where you stop chasing illusions. Wow, and I'm really drawing that from uh, Anuradha Nakshatra. It, it's a, a time where you stop chasing illusions. So that's, that's a really interesting thing. So that's happening on the 26th of May. And what I'm gonna do for each of you is share um, how that's gonna impact you, what house, where, where is that happening for you? Okay, well, I think we've, come to that time we have indeed i'm up to the part in my notes where we're going to go through the mini readings so if you're going to join me on this long journey of going through all the signs let's do this because i know i now know that there are a few of you who do watch the whole thing thank you so much to those of you who do uh, it's a really great way to learn the whole zodiac to learn the whole system and i know from my experience me doing all of the um all of the signs month after month it's it's really helping me as a reader when i read someone's chart because knowing the planets and how they behave through transit is really really important and that's a way that you can look actually when you're sitting with a chart doing a reading and i'm considering doing some kind of i don't know maybe how to read a chart type video um, and some of you have mentioned I should start a Patreon or I should do something like that. I, I'm exploring these different things where I'm going to create maybe some affordable content. Um, see, I'm saying it now on the camera, so 12 minutes. Oh gosh, I should carry on. But now that I'm saying it and, and launching this publicly, you know, it'll co compel me to get on and do it. Um, I need to find the time. That's all. I'm just so busy doing readings. But I do want to do some like 
proper in-depth discussions on like how to read a chart, um, how to approach things and, and some of the things I've found through, through doing this, uh, I've definitely got some things to share. So, and I would of course, if I was to do a video like that, I would make it very affordable and you know, easily accessible. So I am, I'm looking into these things, stay tuned on the channel, I will keep you posted with what I'm doing. But as I say, if any of you are watching the whole thing, it is really cool to study the planets in transit because um, when you're studying a birth chart, basically the, the planets are mid-transit. You know, they're moving, but they're just frozen in time for that moment. And you kind of caught them in that movement. So l learning um, the transit placements and, and how they behave in a transitory way is, is a really, really good thing. Okay, let's begin. Why don't we begin? So, Aries Moon. Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Aries Moon, but you could be Aries Ascendant. It doesn't matter. Uh, Aries Moon will show you how you're going to feel about things through your mind, and the Ascendant placement will show the physical path as it unfolds beneath your feet. Okay, so that's how we read these. Now, I'm going to just take a look at my notes and take you through what we've got going on here. For the entire month, we've got four planets in your second house. Now, who are these four planets? We've got Venus, Mercury, Rahu, and the Sun. So this is a great time to be creative, great time to be with family, great time for trying new dishes. You might get creative in the kitchen, you know, that could be really good, and Rahu's there. When, you know, we've got this Rahu... Venus Mercury I mean that can be great for exotic food and being creative with food you know you might you might want to make something very different uh, I've got the note here yeah you might be tempted to buy expensive things so hey if you can do you know uh, in a sensible way treat yourself indulge in I do have the note here sensible ways yes <laughs> so don't go crazy don't go overboard uh, at the end of the month, we've got a lunar eclipse. Now what that will be for you, that's happening in your eighth house. Okay, so this will end something in regards to your love life. Uh, it could be an end to something in regards to in-laws, extended family, shared assets. Could be to do with money. If you are dependent, say for example, on a family member for money, you know this this lunar eclipse I, i'm not saying that it will end the dependence no i'm not saying that at all but like it could there could be like a dynamic about you not feeling great about that and that could be eclipsed out okay that that would be quite a good thing to go isn't it you know if, if you're feeling uncomfortable about something or or there's some dynamic or pattern in you that that could do with shifting that could happen at this time Got the note here your heart might get a clear out okay so this could be really good for your love life um, and that could be if you're in a relationship that's fine it could be a clear out a letting go of past resentments of things that you found it hard to to really let go of um, that could could go at this time and that way new levels of love um, can come in Saturn retrogrades at the end of this month. So think back to Jan Feb of this past year and the time period of Jan Feb to about April. That's kind of roughly the sort of um, time period. What, what's been going on? And if there have been some major things that have been happening or you've been busy with, all that old ground, Saturn's going to cover that again. He's just going to make sure that you are doing really great and you know if there are some weak links you might want to press or test or check or just make sure that you're you're really you know you've really sorted some things out so for you this is happening in your 10th house it's in regards to your career so career you know Saturn's going to be retrograding so if there have been some old projects something you haven't completed something you haven't done might be time to go back and finish that off that could be happening uh, over the coming months ahead. So that's something to keep in mind there, Aries Moon or Aries Ascendant. So thank you so much for tuning in and we are now gonna welcome Taurus Moon. 
Taurus Moon. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Taurus Moon or Taurus Ascendant, either one. You can look up either the Moon placement. It's going to show your mind and how you feel about things emotionally. And the Ascendant placement is going to show you, you know, the path of your life as it unfolds beneath your feet. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at what you've got going on in Taurus Moon. So for the entire month, we've got four planets in your first house. So who are these planets? We've got Venus, Mercury, Rahu, and the Sun. So it's a great time to work on your physical body, okay? Your physique, exercise. There's gonna be a lot of planetary energy there, but this is good planetary energy there. This is, there's nothing um, problematic. I mean, okay, at times maybe things might get a little bit draining possibly, but, uh, I actually see this as energizing. This should be quite good. Great time to get fit, try new things while exercising, new yoga moves, new route for walking or running, whatever it is. Because Rahu is there, it's like, try something new. Try something you haven't done before. I think this is a really good time for that. Uh, at the end of the month, we've got a lunar eclipse. And that's going to bring some form of completion in regards to business partnerships, your marriage, your public or social media following, any of that kind of thing, or possibly um, foreign contacts or something like that. So that's your seventh house there. So an old pattern can be shared at this time. And that's an old dynamic within you. Okay, it's something that you're either in the habit of doing or, you know, um, in terms of your marriage, you know, maybe, maybe there are some old resentments or something that needs clearing out in your business. How could this be? And this is kind of, I tend to see seventh house as being self-employed businesses, contractors, that kind of thing. So is there some kind of old dynamic, some old thing? And do you know, this could be around confidence. This could be around um, something within you that just, that just could, an old pattern that needs to be shared, that needs to be eclipsed out. Now, what's a good thing to do at this time is to keep a journal about this and bring into your consciousness and write down, actually physically write it. It's not good to do it on the computer. It's not the same effect. When you use ink and your hands, it's different. Write it on paper, what it is that you could do with shedding at this time. And this could be something, you know, what would you like to have eclipsed out on the 26th of, now it is the 26th of May, am I right? I haven't got that written down here. Let me check that. Yes, it is the 26th of May, so have it written down. And then on the 12th of May, when we've got that new moon, you can burn it up or tear it up or get rid of it somehow and then celebrate and feel good, be happy that you've, you've shed it. And then on the 26th, the planets will do the rest. The planets will do the real clearing. So this could be a really good time. Saturn retrograde, end of this month. So it is a good exercise to think back to Jan, Feb of this year and to about April. Now that ground that you've covered in regards to your beliefs, in regards to authority, what you consider authority in, in this world, uh, it could be, you know, for all of us, it's always been our parents from the beginning. They're our first authority, right? And father is here in the ninth. So for years is happening, Saturn's there in the ninth house. So we're really looking at authority, <clears throat> something to do with father, or relationship with father, uh, studies, work, it can be work here. So whatever's been happening for you from Jan, Feb to April, have a look at that. All this old ground, Saturn's gonna cover it again. So, and he's gonna cover that again until about October. So, a good time to review that you, and you kind of know and you know if you're pretty solid on all of this ground it is a really good time to kind of do work to get ahead okay and this could be this could be in terms of your skills 
Uh, we've got the ninth house here. This could be to do with your skills at work. So it could even be a time where you get ahead a little bit. Uh, I'm liking this month for you, Taurus Moon. It's looking pretty good. All right, well, we are now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Let's take a look at this month, the astrology for this month, what's going on. So now for the entire month, you're going to have four planets in your 12th house. So that's Venus, Mercury, Rahu and the Sun. Okay, uh, the specific dates I put in the introduction. So you'll have those there because they're not all, they move in a little bit at different times. Uh, so it's a great time for meditation, great time for indulging in spirituality and spiritual practices and this is great for artistic endeavors as well now this isn't great for launching anything as such but you want to be downloading you want to be bringing the ideas down and kind of preparing or you know it's just a really really creative time not so much for launching though this is for kind of it's kind of like reaching beyond the veil and bringing something back for us earth people that's what this is really good for so if you can do that that would be amazing um, so at the end of the month we've got a lunar eclipse that is going to be on the 26th of may let me just double check that 26th of may yes it is i keep having to double check i'll remember it now so this is going to end something in regards to sixth house matters for you so that's career competition with other people in the workplace legal battles you know all of these things and then this could be something in relation to those that comes to an end now that could be great for a legal battle for example hopefully that comes to an end in your favor um, but something could really come to a close at this time an old pattern can be shared so keep a journal bring into your consciousness what it is that you would like to have shed okay what 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 would you love to let go of for good this is a time to do that and that is in regards to sixth house matters so if it's to do with your career and let's say you're insecure about the competition and you're always comparing yourself with other people maybe that's a dynamic that is burning up a lot of energy or using up a lot of energy unnecessarily and you would love to let go of that you would love for that to be gone forever write that down write down the things that you would just love to have out of your psyche and consciousness and have them gone so write them and writing them um, is different experience to typing on a computer because there's something about the brain connections uh, and ink and paper it actually physically gets the stuff out that I learned from Kathy O'Brien's book on PTSD so um, it's a really good thing to do what you can do is you can burn up that piece of paper just write it on a piece of paper and just burn it up or just throw it in the tear it up and put it in the bin you can do that on the 12th of May the new moon and then when we've got that eclipse the eclipse will just cut it out okay the planets will just do it for you so that is a good practice to do um, Saturn retrograde is at the end of this month so that Saturn retrograde is happening in your eighth house now think back Jan Feb of this year to about now what's been going on Saturn's going to cover all that old ground again so for you this is in regards to your love life it's in regards to in-laws in regards to shared assets and if you've done pretty well on those things then that's then you can start building you can start capitalizing uh, on the good work that you've already done so I know a lot of people who tune into um, videos like this you I, I know one friend of mine in England very spiritual guy and he was in his sadhisati phase second sadhisati he didn't even know he was in it <laughs> he was having a great life he had no clue he was totally happy and what I tend to find is very spiritual people if you're honest and you're doing the self-love thing Saturn's not going to bother you so you, you'll probably be fine all right Gemini moon well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Cancer moon Cancer moon welcome thank you so much 
for joining. Now this month we've got four planets in your 11th house. So that is the Sun, Venus, Mercury and Rahu. Okay, so it's quite a big combination. Uh, this is a great time to launch creative projects. So if you've got something that's good to be launched, if you've got something that's good to go to the public, this is a really great time for that. Great time. If you don't have anything to launch, don't worry. It's a great time to be creative. It's a great time to go for promotions, go for that next step in life, put your name out there, get socializing, go for jobs, all that kind of thing. This is a great time for that. <coughs> because it's very likely that you're going to land the thing that you want. You've got very supportive uh, planetary energy for landing opportunities at this time. So the end of the month, that is the 26th of May, we've got lunar eclipse. Um, that's going to end something. Something's going to complete. Something's going to come to a close. And that's in regards to fifth house matters. So that is in regards to your children, your creativity. Uh, and let's say there's some kind of old pattern in your psyche or your consciousness. Something like, I'm not very creative or I can't do it or this is too hard or something like that. Bring up those old patterns or dynamics that are holding you back that you know that are holding you back and write them down it really helps to write them down and not type them on a computer very important just physically put it on paper and then burn it uh, or tear it up on the 12th of may when we've got the new moon and then on the 26th when we've got that lunar eclipse the, the planets will just take care of it for you it's just going to eclipse out that old thing that you no longer need okay so this is an amazing time another thing you could be wanting to release is a creative blockage or creative blockages or if you feel like you're blocked creatively or why is it that i'm not getting inspiration why is it that i'm you know i don't feel like i'm in the flow i don't feel connected um this is a good time to to release those things so yeah i, I you know and i get creative blockages and um, things like that but uh, you know I think the more you are conscious of these things and just be with it be with yourself be kind to yourself these things move through anyway but if you're going through something that's particularly you know that's been long term or it's been a bit chronic or it's a really good time to cut some of that stuff right out um, the eclipse can do that for you so we've got Saturn retrograde happening at the end of this month. So for you, that's happening in your seventh house. So the thing to do here is to think back to Jan, Feb of this year to about now, what's been happening. And that will be your seventh house. So this is in regards to business partnerships, um, your marriage, foreign ties, your public social media, any of that kind of thing. So if you've been going fine in all those areas and there hasn't been anything um, that's being tested, then you know you can really use this time to get ahead in those areas and to capitalize on, on the recent past. So Cancer Moon, thank you so much for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this entire month we've got four planets in your 10th house. So that's Venus, Mercury, Rahu and the Sun. So this is a big time for work. Leo Moon, you have a lot, of, I'm always talking about work with you. I don't know why, but I think it's because you also have a lot of sixth house activity. Yeah, again, we got some more, that's Saturn there. I can see that. Um, so again, we're talking about work with you. Wow, okay. I always try to bring everybody something new, but every every month we're talking about work for you. <clears throat> Let's take a look here. So I've got the note here. You'll have the energy to put into work projects, starting new things work-wise, being more creative at work. Now use your logic at work. Let your logical head lead uh, instead of your heart. Okay, and that's definitely down to uh, Mercury being strong and Venus not being so strong in this place. Now at the end of the month, we've got a lunar eclipse, 26th of May, and that's going to end something or bring something to completion in regards to your home life. So this could be a really good time just to do the simple practical thing of clutter clearing. 
you know, tune into some Mary Kondo videos or watch some Martha Stewart or something like that for inspiration. But I mean, really what you need to do is tackle those cupboards that you've just been stuffing things and putting, you know, and I'll deal with that later. Later is now. It's like that, that whatever it is that that later is um, where you know and you keep seeing it every day and you're just like, not today. Well, that today is coming and you're going to have to sort out the cupboards. So um, I've got a note here to keep a journal and bring into your consciousness what you would like to have eclipsed out. And that is in terms of your fourth house of home life. So what is it that you would like to have eclipsed out? And this could be to do with relationship with mother as well. Uh, if there's some dynamic or pattern with the two of you or, or you know, there's something that you could do with shedding or letting go. Write it out on paper and you can burn it up on the 12th of May, the new moon. Okay, that's always a good day. I, I like to do a little burning thing on the new moon. I don't know why, but that's what I do. Um, new moon is just a good time to burn things up. Or you could just rip it up and get rid of it. But, you know, it's a really good time to to bring out of your psyche what is it the things that you could do with just not having that in your psyche anymore what's holding you back it could be in regards to anything but really we're looking at fourth house of home um, or relationship with mother okay it could be to do with how you nurture yourself maybe you want to improve that improve that strengthen that relationship with yourself so we've also got Saturn, Saturn retrograde at the end of this month so think back to Jan Feb of this year to now what ground have you covered and Saturn's going to go over that old ground again and for you this is happening in your sixth house of career competition at work uh, legal cases your service to the world that kind of thing so if you've been doing fine in that area you, you can get ahead you can get ahead in terms of your career Saturn will actually help you um, Saturn's brilliant in the sixth so you've got a good thing, Leo Moon. You've got a really good thing. So you can really capitalize. You can get ahead at this time if you want to. If you put some work in, the, the world is very much your oyster. Saturn retrograde is a brilliant time, in fact, to, um, to get ahead. If he's not testing, if, he's, if Saturn's not having to test you or clean things up, or you know, you can get ahead. It's very, very good. All right, Leo Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm gonna check on the time. We're doing good, good. Okay, right, for the entire month, we've got four planets in your ninth house. So we've got Sun, Rahu, Venus, and Mercury. If you watch my introduction, you'll see the different dates where they come in. Uh, Rahu is very much there and has been for quite a while. So you're going to have the energy to skill up. This is good. It's a great time to add more strings to your bow. It's a great time to study things that will help you excel at work. So if there are additional skills, if there are extra things that you want to learn, you know, you want to take an executive course on something or, you know, you think, oh God, if I just learn that computer program or if I just do this or, you know, and everything will be so much better. So this is a good time to be doing that, definitely. Uh, it will be lit up so you'll have some ability to you know maybe maybe the right course is going to be lit up or something like that uh, at the end of the month we've got a lunar eclipse which is happening on the 26th of May and that's going to complete something's going to complete when it comes to your sense of courage this is really interesting so I've got a note here that it's a good time to release limiting beliefs so if you have any thoughts around I'm not blank enough I'm so I'm not good enough I'm not tall enough I'm not beautiful enough I'm not you know some, and something to do with your courage and confidence <clears throat> if you've got some limiting beliefs any of that it's a really important time for you to shed those once and for all these can be eclipsed out they can be gone so you've really got a chance to let go of some of these things um, now to do that, what you can do is just bring them up into your consciousness, really think about what it is and actually write them down, write them down on paper. And I'm going to be doing this, by the way, I don't suggest anything I don't do. I do this stuff. Um, for me at the moment, what am I working on? I'm working on 
getting rid of headaches forever. I never want to have another headache again. And I'm kind of I'm closing in on the headache program. I really am. I think it's been a couple of months since I've taken any paracetamol, which for me is like amazing. So um, I'm definitely doing my work. And what I do is I write stuff down on paper as I have here and just, you know, get my pen and just scribble. This is actually a pen. Would you believe? Look at that. It's like a, I don't know if you can see that. I haven't shown any of the other signs. You're very special. But um, I write stuff down and what I do is I'll either tear it up or burn it up. Uh, it's a brilliant thing to do. And for you, the thing is, yeah, it's around courage. It's around courage. It's around, it's a third house type things. Courage and confidence is a good one. Could be to do with social type things as well. Maybe if you've got a situation that you want to have eclipsed out, something that's troubling you with friends or peers or any of that. But you can write this stuff down. And on the 12th of May, with the new moon, you can burn it up, tear it up. And then on the 26th, when we have that lunar eclipse, the planets will just do it for you. They'll just cut out whatever it is um, that no longer serves you. So we've got Saturn retrograde happening at the end of this month. So think back to Jan, Feb of this year. And what have you covered Jan, Feb to about now? What, what is the ground that you've covered? All this old ground, Saturn is going to cover it again. So if you've been doing fine, now for you, where is this? This is happening in the fifth house of children. So your relationship with your children. If that's been, maybe if that's been challenging or testing lately or, um, you know, Saturn's going to cover that again. Okay. Uh, this could be to do with your creativity, right? Your creative projects. If you've been having any challenges getting something launched or um, you just haven't, been feeling in the mood to create something or well you're going to get another opportunity <clears throat> you're either going to get another opportunity or if everything's fine then you just, you're going to get more time to get ahead of the others so retrogrades can be amazing right so if you if you pass the test the first time you're just going to be going back and perfecting and making things even better um, this could be so fifth house what other fifth house type things for you could be your kingdom, the running of your kingdom, okay? How has that been going? If, have, if there have been any challenges or difficulties in the running of your kingdom, okay? Uh, or your own inner authority. So this could be to do with, with just you and how you feel about how things are going. So have a look over the recent past, see what's been going on, and you'll get a sense for what Saturn's gonna cover again uh, and if he doesn't have to cover it again, then you can get ahead in all of those areas. So Virgo Moon, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. <clears throat> so for the entire month, we've got four planets in your eighth house. Okay, so this is Venus, Mercury, Rahu, and the Sun. It's quite a combination. Uh, and I'm liking this energy, you know, <clears throat> because Venus is here and Venus loves being here. I'm saying that this should be really good energy for love and romance. Um, you know, perhaps you might like to take a short trip. That might be something you might want to do. Um, you might be working out things regarding joint assets or dealing with in-laws. But that area of your life is very much lit up at this time. At the end of the month, we've got a lunar eclipse. Now that lunar eclipse is on the 26th of May, and that's going to complete something in regards to your family. So this is the second house for you. Uh, perhaps it's time for an old dynamic or pattern of relating that isn't working. Y you might wanna get rid of that for good. <clears throat> and you're gonna have the opportunity to do that. So what do I mean by this? I mean, Look at the second house issues. Okay, so second house of family. This is about relating, how you relate. Maybe in the family you you always have a certain role where you're always the, I don't know, the calm one or the, the one that people go to or you're the scapegoat or you're the golden child or you're the something about your role in the family <clears throat> that you're 
you're tired of it you don't want this anymore you know and you've been doing your self-development your personal development work and you're like I just can't keep being that or doing this in that way anymore and I really want to mature I really want to grow out of this this is the perfect time because the planets will help you shed some old thing that is no longer serving you we all grow out of roles and, and certain dynamics and, and patterns to do with our families we all mature and <clears throat> it's a really good time to do that so interesting that my voice is going in regards to this so there's there there's someone out there who's having a challenge with this um, who's having a challenge with this role thing it's time for it to go it's time for it to change and this is your chance this is your chance for this to be eclipsed out okay so bring it up to your consciousness bring it up to the top write it out write it out on paper that you know I'm tired of this relating dynamic that I have with with these family members or that family member or, or this situation in my family or whatever it is so there's something here that you want to release and you can do that at this time so write it out on paper when you physically write it out on paper not type it out on your computer that's not the same effect um, Kathy O'Brien she's written a book on P PTSD and she talks about getting it from the brain through the hand through ink uh, onto the paper and then actually tearing that up or burning it is really a way of release it's really a chemical way of getting it out of the body so you can do that and I would say get it on paper burn it up on the 12th of May new moon if you can and then on the 26th of May the planets will do the, the clearing for you okay so uh, we've got Saturn retrograde at the end of this month so think back to Jan Feb of this past year to about now so what have you been covering in terms of fourth house matters so Saturn's going to cover this old ground again so for you it's in regards to your home uh, how you work and how you live so maybe you're working from home now and maybe that's quite a change to how you used to work there's something that's possibly shifted in terms of where you live how you work so Saturn is going to be checking through this again he's going to be if there's something that needed to happen that didn't happen you're going to get an opportunity to do it right or to get it right um, so this is great uh, yeah this is about structuring sort of work life together and possibly in the home area so this, this is good this is good energy Libra moon I feel like I feel like you're being given the opportunity to sort out a lot of things to do with your family where you live where you work um, family and home stuff there's a massive emphasis here for you Libra Moon but I feel like there's a great potential to to really uplift and improve your family life uh, in a massive way this should be a good month for you Libra Moon I'm excited for you in, in that I feel like you can make a lot of progress and, and you can do really well um, so Libra Moon thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to check on the time. It looks like the memory card is about to go. So I'll just do the best that I can. And because we've got a few more signs to do. That's okay. All right. Now for the entire month, we've got four planets in your seventh house. So who are these planets? We've got Venus, Mercury, Rahu, and the Sun busy time for your seventh house so <clears throat> I've got the note here you'll want to take care in your marriage uh, in your business go slow don't rush anything okay so yeah this is definitely a time to watch how you speak to uh, your partner your marriage partner in particular or your business partner okay Mars is in Gemini uh, eighth house there so yeah just you know uh, this is a time to take care in relationships in all relationships actually um, in, in terms of the other it's a great time to just go slow and take care so we've got at the end of the month we've got a lunar eclipse now this lunar eclipse is happening on the 26th of May and this is happening in regards to your entire sense of self this is happening in your first house I think the camera just got cut where I said your entire sense of self so I think I was saying that the lunar eclipse is going to complete or end something 
to do with your entire sense of self. So clearly this eclipse is happening for you in your first house. This is major because this is to do with you. This is to do with all of you. Okay, so this is really big. Um, it can be potentially very big. Okay, so these are beliefs that you hold around your entire sense of self your entire sense of who you think you are in this world, you know, how you be. It's like, how well you relate to yourself. Do you believe in yourself? Okay. Wow. So if you don't believe in yourself or you have, there's something in that relationship there with yourself that's blocking you, that's limiting you, that's not letting you be the amazing person that deep down you know you can be, right? So if there's anything that's blocking you or limiting you in that way, this is really a time where that can go. That can be eclipsed out once and for all. You can shed that and be so much lighter and happier and easier about life and, and be loving life more, more than ever before. So what a possibility, right? What an amazing possibility is here for you. This is incredible. So um, my advice or guidance is to, uh, you know, Get a journal or get some paper and, and, and bring up to your consciousness, bring up to the surface what those things might be and write them down, write them on paper and write down what it is that you would like to shed and then burn that up on the 12th of May, the new moon. And then on the 26th of May, that eclipse will just eclipse it out. It, it'll just sort it out for you. Okay, so this is a really big time where you can really um, shed some old dynamics that are no longer working for you. We've got Saturn retrograde happening at the end of this month. So for you, this is going to happen in your third house. Think back to Jan, Feb, around that kind of time to about April. Now, what is the old ground that you have just covered? Saturn's going to be covering that again. So this is in regards to your third house. So this is to do with your personal sense of courage. This could be to do with peers. This could be to do with definitely your image um, and how you present yourself at the workplace. It could be to do with that. It could be to do with media as well, social media even. Uh, your, and that would be social media to do with your friends, right? Not the big kind of social media, which is more seventh house, which is your business. Um, and that can be 11th as well. But third is more your social, your personal social media. So what's been tested or what, you know, what is, what's Saturn going to cover again? Now, if you're fine on all those fronts, when Saturn does his retrograde, that's just a gift of time where you're going to be able to, if you use that time, you can improve, you can get ahead even. So... It's really an amazing time, potentially, for you to do really well. This, is, this one's all to do with you. This is amazing. This is quite a theme here. Uh, and I think you can come out of this month, if you really work with your own sense of self, who you are, and improving that, this is the month for you. I mean, if you're very much on that self-development, continuous improvement journey, oh, Scorpio Moon, you'll be unstoppable after this month. It could be an amazing month for you. So, uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to take on the time. We are good. That's good. Memory card is not going to fill up and the battery is not flickering. Yay. All right. So what have we got going on? Now, for the entire month, we've got four planets in your sixth house. So that's Venus, Mercury, Rahu and the Sun. So all the planets this month, these planets in particular, they want you to win. Okay, so it's a great combination and they're, they're in a good place here. This is really good. The only one that's not doing so great here is Venus. Venus is not so effective here. So if you can this month, lead with logic. Don't lead with your heart. Okay, it's not the month for your heart. Put the heart on the back burner or on the back seat or whatever. You don't need your heart as much. You need your logical self, your mind your mental powers that would be good this month 
Um, hopefully they, yes, your mental powers should be sharp and should shine when compared to the competition as well. At the end of the month, we've got a lunar eclipse happening on the 26th of May. So for you, that's going to be happening in your 12th house. So this could end something in regards to your sense of escapism. This could be very good because what if you're a little bit addicted to escaping? <laughs> what if you're a little bit addicted to fantasy thinking? And I am going to do an episode where I talk about the concept of fantasy thinking and the 12th house. I can't wait to talk about that because there's a lot to say there. Um, but the, one of the things about this 12th house is that we can drain and lose a lot of time when it comes to fantasy thinking or escaping off into fantasies or, you know, um, we can waste a huge amount of time. Reality is just kind of, you know, time is just ticking along and we're, we're stuck in some kind of fantasy. So, yeah, interesting. So something in regards to that might be eclipsed out. Now, this could be really good if you're wasting time in fantasy thinking. Maybe that could come to an end. <laughs> OK, this could be good in that, you know, you could get a bit of a well, you could get a bit of a jolt. You could get a bit of a jolt that, whoa, I have been wasting a lot of time. Uh, that's what this eclipse could mean for you. You could kind of realize that you've been draining or, or wasting time. It's a possibility. So think about this. Think about, you know, the 12th house matters. Think about where do I lose time in my life? On what things do I lose time? And um, you can write those things down on paper and you can burn that up or rip it up or whatever on the 12th of May. There's a new moon, so you can, you know, start the process there. And then on the 26th, the eclipse will just do the work for you. It will just get rid of that thing that you've identified that you want to get rid of. So that could be a really good thing to do this month. Um, we've got Saturn retrograde at the end of this month. So think back to Jan, Feb of this year, right the way to about now. It's kind of Feb to now, but I mean, even including Jan. Um, think about this period of time. Now Saturn's going to be covering that old ground again. So what old ground is he covering for you? It's second house type stuff. So if you've had to deal with family stuff or things to do with your long-term wealth and savings, um, you know, if there's any of that that you've been having to deal with, and if that's all been fine over these last few months, then Saturn's basically gifting you time. You'll be able to prosper or, you know, improve or get ahead in these areas. So see how that works for you. This could be a really good time. I definitely think that this could be a good time. Definitely, yeah, what, what is it that you can, if there's some loss of energy that's happening in your life, the eclipse could stop that and plug that. So this eclipse actually could work very well for you, Sagittarius moon. Uh, see how you go with that. All right, well, thank you so much for joining Sagittarius Moon. And we are now going to welcome, uh, or you could be Ascendant as well. Sorry, <laughs> I should have said that at the start. Uh, we are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Or you could be Capricorn Ascendant as well. So Moon is your moon placement, the mind. I think I've been forgetting to say that in each sign. Whoops. Anyway, Moon is your moon placement, the mind, and, and your um, Ascendant is the path that unfolds beneath your feet. All right, so Capricorn Moon, or Ascendant, for the entire month, we've got four planets in your fifth house. Nice. This is Venus, Mercury, <clears throat> Rahu, and the Sun. I like this. This is good. So Venus is very happy to be here, and that's great. Um, let your heart lead in all matters, okay? Venus is nice and strong here. So especially when it comes to creativity, when it comes to love, when it comes to children, when it comes to creative projects, great time to let that Venus, that feminine side of yours to really take the lead. Uh, at the end of the month, we've got a lunar eclipse happening. Now this is going to end something or complete something in regards to your house of gains. So that's the 11th house. So this is a good time to explore how you feel about money. And it's a good time to let go of limiting beliefs around money. Okay, because when it comes to an eclipse, what do we want to lose? We want to lose anything that's holding us back. Okay, so if the universe is going to eclipse something out, why don't we get it to eclipse something out of our psyches that is holding us back? So how do you feel about making big money? How do you feel about others around you making big money? 
it's a good time to think about these things and if there are some bad habits or things that are holding you back write them down on paper burn it up or tear it up on the 12th of may on the new moon good time to just get rid of that and then on the 26th of may the planets will do the eclipsing work for you okay the planets will just sort that out so um we've got saturn retrograde happening end of this month so for you this is happening in the first house so think back to jan feb of this year to about now saturn's going to cover that old ground again and that's in regards to your first house my god yeah capricorn moon you're sadly sadly i know i know i know i know it's been tough i know so this is happening in regards to your entire sense of self again like we, we, we keep revisiting this yeah you're gonna be i'm serious of everyone in the entire i'm not capricorn moon or ascendant but i'm telling you as to me i think you guys are going to come out the heroes of this time because of because of the way that what you've got happening at this um junction it's you've nominated a tough thing okay so if you are going through tough stuff know that um you're probably doing far better than you think you are as well so so please don't um get too down anyone who's chosen to be capricorn moon or ascendant at this time i think is a hero i think you're doing the best so yeah just the fact that you keep keeping on is incredible and is to be rewarded and yeah i'm kind of getting a sense that angels are all saying th these people are heroes and they will know you will come to know it might not feel like it at times it, you might feel like oh what is this or when is this going to end or am i doing okay or you, know, you might feel numb uh it's perfectly natural but know that you even you will look back and go wow i, I got through some amazing things and some amazing times so this is in regards to your sense of self your first house um it's massive okay so i've got a note here for you what you can do as an activity at this Saturn retrograde time. I haven't had to say this for anybody else. I've just gone through all the signs. I haven't said this for anyone else. Look at the time, 12 minutes. It's all right, I'll spend time, more time with you. You need it. Um, take stock of the last 30 years, if you can. If you've clocked up that much life on this planet and you're able to look back at the last 30 years. Now, what if you're 25? Okay, look back at the last 15. And what would be a great activity for you to do is to really take stock and to see my goodness i have progressed i have matured i have done this i have look at all the things that you've done and there's another thing that's coming into mind which is stoic wisdom where they say um, be grateful for the things that you have because they were at one time things that you wished for you know they were the things that you wanted but that you now have so this is an important activity for you to be doing and, and keep doing this if at ever over the course of you know, this next year or two you get down okay if you get a bit down just remember i've got a lot to be grateful for i've come up very far i have progressed i have done well uh, and just know that you know achieving huge amounts of progress right now might be a little bit difficult it might not be easy Having said that, if you're doing good and you might think back to Jan Feber this year to now and you think, well, it was all right, actually. Fantastic. Because then Saturn is just going to go through that again. You're not going to be tested too much. What it is, this Saturn retrograde will be a gift of time where you'll be able to get ahead. You'll be able to excel. So I think that will be the case for many of you, in fact, um, especially if you're on the spiritual path. That's all that Saturn wants. He just wants you to be honest and loving if you're doing those two things you'll be fine you know and i'm sure most of my audience is like that we don't have any you know elite bankers tuning in so <laughs> i think you'll be fine all right well thank you capricorn moon hang in there keep going you're doing amazing uh, and we are now going to welcome aquarius moon aquarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining now for the entire month We've got four planets in your fourth house. Okay, so who do we have? We've got Venus, Mercury, Rahu, and the Sun. Now, Mercury and Venus both do fantastic in this area. So this is a really great time to redecorate or restyle your home. 
And this could be simple. This could be as simple as changing the cushions. This could be as simple as buying a new vase. This could be as simple as just doing something different and bringing more beauty into your home. It's a great time for that. You'll feel inspired, you'll get ideas. I think you might even find amazing things as you go shopping. You might find some kind of um, some kind of deal or something, some, something you'll come across and you know, and that would be fun. You need to have fun, Aquarius Moon, very important. Uh, now at the end of this month, we've got a lunar eclipse happening. Now that's going to end something in regards to, wow, yeah, this is interesting. This is 10th house. This is your career in the world. Wow. Okay. So this is the 26th of May, lunar eclipse. Something's going to come to a close. You're going to complete on something. Uh, so one of the ways that I'm looking at this, and I mean, this could be the completion of a major project. This could be the completion of an old career. Maybe there's some old career that you've left and, but you're kind of thinking, am I going to go back to that? Or will I need to do that again? Or maybe not. Maybe that's, that's, you know, you've, maybe you've really made your transition. Um, could be an amazing time. But one of the things I'm saying for every sign is to look at how you feel about your profession. How do you feel about your career? And is there something in there? Is there a limiting belief? Is there something that's holding you back? Okay, is there something that you know that, God, if I just lost that belief, you know, because maybe, maybe you're, and it could be around confidence. It could be around thinking you're not good enough or um, you looking at the competition and kind of feeling down or thinking, wow, they're, they're doing so well. Why am I not doing so well? Or there could be something in your psyche that's just, or your consciousness, that's just slightly holding you back. Now, what I'm saying to all signs is to write that out on paper and um, just write that down. What you want to do is you want to tear that up or burn that up on the 12th of May when we've got the new moon. And then on the 26th of May, you know, the eclipse will happen. That, that The planets will just take care of it for you. They're just going to get rid of that whatever that is, okay? Because ultimately, I mean, look, if we can help the planets out, you know, if we can say, look, could you, could you, could you get rid of this thing, please? Could you, I just, it's not helping me. Um, that's good. Then, you know, we should put in a request. We shouldn't just see what happens, see what gets eclipsed out. I know many eclipses have come and gone. I always just say, oh, what's going to go? But why don't, why don't we work with this? Why don't we put our request in? And that's what I'm suggesting to all signs. So, um, this is a good time for you to really shed some beliefs around work and really we're looking at the height of your purpose in the world, career. What can you be doing out in the world stage kind of thing. We've got a Saturn retrograde at the end of this month. Okay, so that's going to go on through to October. Now what I'm saying to all signs is think back to Jan, Feb of this year to about now and what is the ground that you've covered in regards to your 12th house nice yes i've just uh, spoken about 12th house for someone else we're speaking about it for you fantastic so all this old ground saturn's going to cover again now for you i'm saying this is in regards to your spirituality it could be to do with your sense of escapism as well Twelfth house is a house of loss. Where do you lose time? A lot of us lose time in, in fantasy thinking. You know, in, in thinking that um, there's nothing wrong with fantasy thinking. We need a little bit of that. We need some of that to keep us going as well. But sometimes this has to be managed because sometimes we can lose or, or drain. I mean, people have drained years of their life into thinking that some, some fantasy is going to happen. So this is a good time to be exploring all of that. Uh, again, and Saturn's going to make you explore all of that again. So um, I've also got the note here that this is a great time for you to master letting go, mastering the art of surrender. So perhaps you've been doing well in that regard from you know Jan, Feb to now. Maybe you haven't been tested or challenged too much when it comes to your spirituality. Great, because as Saturn covers that old ground again, you now have the ability to go finer, go deeper, do it even better. Okay, so I think this is a mastery thing for you, Aquarius, and I think that you can really be mastering surrender, mastering letting go. It's quite exciting. Um, this is an important thing. If you can do this very, very well, 
it can it can impact the rest of your life so in such profound ways that it's actually quite difficult to see or know but definitely mastering letting go is, is, is vitally important. All right, well, Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for tuning in, or Aquarius Ascendant, or whatever it is. And um, we are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Or you could be Pisces Ascendant as well. You could be looking at either. You could be Pisces Sun. You could be all kinds of things. Okay, so for the entire month, we've got four planets in your third house. Wow, okay, this is good. Who have we got? We've got Venus, Mercury, Rahu, and the Sun. This is great. Um, Venus and Sun do really well here. So one of the things I'm gonna suggest is that this is a great time to be physically active, physically productive, okay? When I see Venus and Sun together, I do, that can be a bit of a hallmark of athletes. I do see that in very athletic people's charts. So if there's something you wanna do physically, get hands on, get creative, get things done, put your back into it. Are there some projects maybe where it needs your physical self? Maybe there's something, and this could be to do um, with the garden, it could be to do with hobbies as well. It could be to do with some hobby that you just haven't had any time to do. This is really the, the month to find the time to do that. Now at the end of the month, and I know what it's like, like when it's, um, when it's a hobby or something and like if it's, you know, I, I always use the example of jewellery because I used to do that in England and like, but getting all the boxes down and getting all your tools out and getting everything and all of that takes so much time. And I know Ernst Wilhelm talks about it. He talks about getting your paints out and getting everything. And, but like the reason you don't do it so often is because of that intro faffing around bit that takes up time and you don't want to do it. This is the month. You should have the time and the energy to do that. So um, end of the month, we've got lunar eclipse happening on the 26th of May. Now this is gonna end something or complete something in regards to your beliefs. Okay, so this is a ninth house kind of thing. This is great. This is really, really great. For all signs, I've been talking about writing down what are your limiting beliefs, but for you this is actually happening in your area of beliefs, so this is massive. So really get a giant piece of paper, like as big as you can kind of thing, and scribble down all of your limiting beliefs. And really jot them all down. What are your limiting beliefs? What's holding you back uh, in any area of your life? I've got the note here, take stock of all your beliefs. What do you want to let go of? This is a great time to really put that on paper. Kathy O'Brien talks about this in her book about PTSD, that you've got to write it with pen and paper, not do it on your computer, and then tear it up or burn it up. And burn it up on the 12th of May where we've got the new moon. It's a great time to burn it up. And then on the 26th of May, the eclipse is just gonna eclipse that out. Okay, so it's very profound time. At the end of this month, we've got Saturn retrograde happening. So think back to Jan, Feb of this year to about now. So all this old ground, and this is in regards to your house of gains, um, your house of hopes, dreams, and wishes, the 11th house. Um, that's also a humanitarian house. It's also a kind of collective consciousness house, how we're all connected to each other. So from Jan to Feb of this year to about now, all of this old ground, Saturn's going to cover it again. And it's in regards to definitely to big wealth, opportunities coming in. How do you pursue opportunities? How do opportunities come in for you? How do you network? All of these things. So maybe if you've been a bit reluctant to network or you're not much of a networker or, you know, or you've got some limiting beliefs around, uh, you know, don't, don't really... Hi Pisces, sorry the camera just got cut. Um, I think I was talking about, we're in the 11th house and we're talking about how it's possible that, you know, confidence. Sometimes we don't feel like we can network or chase after opportunities or do things like that. Or, so take a look at all of this. Um, Saturn's gonna be testing all of this anyway. So this is in your 11th house and this is Saturn. Oh, this is so good. Well, I mean, look, I think for most of you, I can't imagine that there would be too many. Look, if you have any limiting beliefs around that, write that down because you've got the ninth house thing here uh, as part of your belief stock take thing. I think for most of you, you should be just achieving gains and growth right now. 
this should be an amazing time when Saturn retrogrades over this period. If you've had it pretty easy from Jan, Feb to now, or you haven't been tested too much, brilliant. Because you're going to get an opportunity to get more opportunities for growth. Um, or if you feel like you missed something or you didn't get the opportunity, you're going to get another chance. Okay, I think this is amazing and I'm very excited for you Pisces Moon. Basically, make the most, make the very most of Saturn being in this position because he's going to be here until 2023. And this is one of his absolute best shining places to be. He wants to reward you. He wants to give you the next level up. He wants to give you the job promotion. He wants for you to buy that property or whatever it is. He really wants to reward you. So work with Saturn. Um, if it hasn't been happening, if it's been slow, then definitely um, try to capture the delays or the blockages. Try to see what it is in your own psyche that's delaying or blocking. Try to write that down. Try to burn it up. We've got the, um, as I say, the 12th of May new moon and to destroy and burn up. And then the 26th of May, hopefully uh, that eclipsing process is going to happen. And hopefully that's really going to get rid of delays or blocks to your growth. Okay, so it's, it's very exciting. You should find anyway that after the 26th, hopefully, and keep an eye on this, your 11th house should improve. Your ability to get more gains and opportunities come in, that really should improve. So keep an eye on that. But thank you so much, Pisces Moon or Pisces Ascendant. Thank you so much to everybody who watches these videos. I want to thank you so much for being here for commenting, for subscribing, for liking the videos, any interaction that this channel gets, it keeps me relevant in the YouTube algorithm. But I know that the ultimate way to stay relevant in the YouTube algorithm is to produce more content. So I definitely know that, but I've just been so busy doing client bookings uh, and readings that it's been difficult for me to get around to doing content. But I will be back doing more content. I'm at least doing the pick of cards. So hopefully some of you tune in for that because they're so much fun. And I love my pick a card audience so much. They fill me with so much love and positivity and that really does uh, keep me going as, as you all do. So thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.